All right, I think, I think we're ready to get started. <laughs> so first, who, uh, who shot out of bed this morning and said, I really, really want to see more Comcast stuff? Yes. Well, I'm here to fulfill your dreams. I think uh, I'm actually the last Comcast talk uh, of this summit, so, so we're going we're gonna to shut it down after this. Uh, my name is Charlie Baum. I'm a principal cloud engineer on the uh, application platform acceleration team at Comcast. Our team, as you may have heard from several of my colleagues giving talks, we're tasked with making developers' lives easier, developers' experiences better. And one of the many ways that we do that is by deploying and maintaining large-scale, rapidly growing Cloud Foundry environments. Specifically, I'm here to talk today about our journey into open source Cloud Foundry, uh, and specifically the Genesis tool chain that allowed us to finally be successful with deploying and managing an open source Cloud Foundry footprint that provides the user experience our developers were, were accustomed to with other distributions. All right. So we're going to quickly begin talking about Cloud Foundry at Comcast. Um, you guys may have heard some of this stuff before, but it provides some context around the scale, size, and speed at which we have to operate, which, which allows us to move and forced us to move into some open source. Um, we're going to talk about why we went open source. We're going to talk about what Genesis is, how Genesis specifically helped us. And then I'm going to hopefully push you guys into trying Genesis out and kind of guide you into a, a first initial deployment. So quick overview, we're, we're five years into working on with Bosch and Cloud Foundry at Comcast. Uh, we currently have 23 foundations. Nearly half of those, 11 of those, are open source at this point. Uh, we operate in private and public cloud. We're mostly VMware on-prem, but we do have a little bit of AWS out there, and that's expanding. We currently run about 40,000 AIs across, and about 16 or 17,000 of those are in open source. We run 5 million, 500 million transactions a day, so it's very, very high scale, high demand. Who's using CF at Comcast? Well, we have several thousand applications in, but some of the big ones that you guys have probably heard about, or at least know from a product side, uh, Xfinity Mobile, Xfinity Home Security, Comcast Business, and AIQ, which is our virtual assistant. And uh, Jason Michener, a colleague of mine, gave a demo of that yesterday in the Foundry. I hope you guys caught that. Um, great demo there. So why open source? Well, Comcast is trying to be and becoming a leader in open source communities. We're really working toward that, as we've seen in, in this summit and several others. Um, we've, we're, we have established an open source practice led by Nithya Ruff, who we saw speak at the keynotes the other day. We have an open source fellowship program specifically um, for working on Cloud Foundry and upstreaming uh, work into those open source communities. And lastly, the demand for Cloud Foundry platform was far exceeding the budget allocations that we had come up with. Um, and we had to come up with a way to provide capacity to our developers in a real cost-effective manner. So to give you an idea of our growth here, um, we started, this is just, you know, our journey is five years old, but just less than three years ago, we had about 7,000 AIs, and we're now 40,000 plus. So that growth is, is extensive, and we don't see that slowing down uh, anytime soon. So why Genesis? Um, Earlier in our CF journey, during the Bosch one and two days, we made a couple attempts at open source CF, but we didn't really find it sustainable. Um, it wasn't really a sustainable enterprise friendly solution for the small team specifically that we have running Cloud Foundry. Um, we've seen other talks at previous CF summits that have addressed some of the issues here. You know, too many manifests to manage, too large a manifest to manage. Um, no real easy way for secure secrets management and or renewal rotation. You know, a typical CF deployment is, contains at least 19 CAs and 72 certificates. So multiply that times R11 foundations. Um, that's a lot of secret certs to manage. The manual stitching of all the releases that make up a CF deployment, um, you know, numbers in the 20s, maybe pushing 30 for that. And that's just CF alone. That doesn't even talk about, you know, marketplace services. Um, there was real no simple way to create marketplace services that were consistent across all of our platforms. The pain of onboarding some new folks onto a team managing this type of ecosystem. Um, we found it very difficult to train people up on, on some of the older ways that, that open source CF was, was deployed. 
In summary, it did not allow us to be able to really move quickly and implement and scale CF as fast as our developers needed us to. You know, our CF has been growing at tremendous rates. We really needed to be able to respond quickly with a stable, uh, repeatable, reliable CF paradigm. So, what is Genesis? Well, no, it's not the Peter Gabriel, <laughs> Phil Collins band from the 70s, although Land of Confusion could really be used to describe a lot of what we were trying to do. It is not the project used to make uninhabitable planets habitable in Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan. Although, <laughs> this case, in this case, the metaphor kind of works, and you'll see why in a minute. So, Genesis is Bosch at scale. That's really the core here. It's secrets management. It's automation built in um, with Concourse, CICD. Prepackaged best practices, kits. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. So what do I mean by Bosch at scale? Well, this is a typical breakdown of, of our architecture. Um, and Genesis allows us to use like a spoke type architecture model. We're a main Bosch, we call it Proto Bosch. That's the, that's the name you'll see in a lot of the documents um, for Genesis and, and, the, and the architecture. So we'll use that. Proto Bosch is deployed and its primary job is simply to deploy other environment Bosches. So we have a main Bosch that handles that protobosh handles multi-cloud, multi-CPI, and cloud config, but only for the Bosch deployments it's supporting. Uh, each of these Bosch environments, or sorry, each of these environment Bosch directors deploys CF and all accompanying services needed for a CF. And this even, could even include CFCR. So we currently have this architecture scaled out to 11. So imagine prod Bosch times 11 and a dev Bosch up there, that's, that's us. 11 open source cloud foundry, both on-prem VMware and public AWS, all running with this architecture. Um, and I like to think of, of Proto Bosch sort of like Lord of the Rings. You know, there's one Bosch to rule, rule all Bosches. Some, uh, so a secrets management, some additional deployments from main Bosch, Proto Bosch, help Genesis live up to its potential. One of those arguably the most important is Vault. Genesis integrates heavily with Vault to create and store all secrets to every deployment and environment within this architecture. Genesis handles this and creates them all on the fly and as part of the deployment for you. All secrets are completely hands off to the operator with the exception of AWS keys or other IaaS and organization specific credentials and certificates. But for the most part, Genesis handles it all and does it all for you. Secrets can be rotated and removed or, and renewed easily using Genesis CLI. And Vault is easily deployed with Genesis, and I'll show that in a little bit as well. Automation. Concourse is another Genesis kit. Bosch deployment deployed from ProtoBosch. This Concourse seamlessly handles upgrades to keep all of your environments identical. Concourse used in this spoke architecture allows you to have a runway model of upgrades. So Concourse can push uh, a new CF version or a new Bosch to DevBosch. If you like how that's working, testing okay, click a button, push that out to QA Bosch. You like that, and then you can click out and, and proceed to upgrade your, um, the rest of your prod Bosch or CF environments. All of these are based on uh, GitHub changes. Backup, backup integrates into this model as well. Um, we use Shield, Shield's a core component of this architecture. This allows you to back up your vault, your concourse, your Bosch directors, Cloud Foundry databases, blob stores to WebDAV, S3, GCP storage. There's a number of different plugins and features that, that you can use to back up what you want, where you want. So uh, what we're really trying to show here is that you have a central um, managed control plane that facilitates the deployment and scaling of Bosch deployments at an enterprise level that, that we need. So we talked about kits, best practices. The secret sauce of Genesis is the kits. Kits are essentially a collection of YAML and configuration files that provide best practices and defaults for deployments. These kits are easily customizable and allow operators to have a say in how things are deployed. So the Bosch Genesis operator is dealing with 70 to 20 line Genesis YAML manifests instead of 1,200 to 5,000 line you know, Bosch CF manifests. Genesis handles all the YAML merging, replacing, and overrides for you. Flexibility, you can enable disable features such as, off the top of my head, high availability DB for Cloud Foundry. 
You can deploy Autoscaler along with Cloud Foundry. You can create uh, a Cloud Foundry for a test demo environment with a small footprint, minimal VMs. You can do that all with, with, with basic parameters within, um, within the Genesis manifest. You have a lot of control over how your environment um, or over how your deployment, despite the small size of these Genesis manifests. Third, you can build your own kits. This is all fully open source, fully available, and Genesis has a command line tool to create your own kit and help you walk you through that. So you can deploy other Bosch releases. You can deploy your own created in-house Bosch releases with Genesis. Uh, it's perfectly flexible and available to, to, to use any you know, Bosch deployment that's out there or any built in the house. Um, you can create it own kit and then push it to the open source Genesis community to add to that. For example, Comcast, we created the Squid Genesis kit. We had a need for Squid proxy in our pro environment, so we created a kit and, and open source and it's up there and available. So maybe you might be thinking, won't they be opinionated? If we simplify things down to defaults and best practices, will they be opinionated? Well, yeah, they will be somewhat opinionated. But that works to our favor here because they contain best practices and things that you don't really want to or have to worry about. But it's easy to apply your own opinions by overriding defaults and the manifest with parameters or instance groups that will be uh, merged directly into the Bosch manifest that is then deployed. I encourage you to check out the Genesis Community GitHub repo for a full list of available kits. But these are the ones we most like, most, most uh, rely on. So Bosch Genesis Kit, Cloud Foundry has a Genesis Kit, Concourse. The jump box is kind of integral. Uh, I didn't have it on the diagram, but it's essentially a VM chock full of every tool you would ever need to manage Bosch, Concourse, Cloud Foundry, uh, Shield, Vault, and Blacksmith. So it's a, it's a, it's a VM where instead of having tools and worrying about updating tools or installing tools on your own laptops or new hires laptops, everybody kind of works through a jump box and has common tools. Uh, there's a Blacksmith jump uh, Genesis kit. Blacksmith is a service broker that allows us to provide marketplace services such as Rabbit, uh, Redis, Rabbit, Postgres, MariaDB. And then there's a Vault Genesis kit, Prometheus monitoring kit, and a Shield Genesis kit for backup. So how did Genesis help us? Well, aside from all the heavy lifting that Genesis does on our behalf to simplify uh, and scale our Bosch and CF deployments, it drastically reduces our time to build out new environments. Our initial deployment took some time to get a handle on. Once we got our head around that, though, we were able, since able to reduce our time to deploy an environment to less than a day, about 16 hours. So on the left is, is hours there. So the first one took about 50 hours. You know, once we got our head around and went down, and now we can we can. Um, we can kick out a deployment in, in less than a day. So Cloud Foundry is really the best platform for stateless applications, and demand for these services is growing exponentially in Comcast, as you saw. Genesis helps us quickly turn bare infrastructure into usable capacity for our developers in a simple and repeatable way. Genesis also manages our infrastructure for us, so we're able to look when we're looking to expand our team, we really focus more on developer-centric hires. So instead of spending time in Bosch, we're spending time scripting, writing, improving, automating our platforms, as well as helping developers use our platforms more efficiently. We really work closely with our developers, so it makes sense to hire and have people on our team that have uh, developer backgrounds so we can jump in and look at Java logs, look at heap logs, look at code and help our folks use our platform more efficiently. Where can I get started? Well, here's a couple links that we can take a look at. Um, Genesis Project IO, that's the real main landing page for Genesis. Good documentation there. Unlike some open source projects I've seen, these, are, these tools are very, very well documented. Uh, the Genesis Project IO has great documentation on there, has blogs, has some um, demos and labs that you can go through, good information. Um, the Genesis CLI is available at the github.com slash Stark and Wayne. Genesis community where all the kits are. That's under github.com slash genesis-community. And the safe tool, which I'll talk about in a moment, is available at Sark and Wayne slash safe. So I'm obviously pretty passionate about this, and I'm hoping that some of you get inspired and go try this out. And here's how you can kind of get started. You can easily test and demo this, this ecosystem. Unfortunately, it can't really be done on a local system. You really do need some IaaS. Um, so go grab some, you know, small chunk of IaaS, some compute, a couple IPs, some storage. Doesn't matter if it's VMware, OpenStack, AWS, Azure, GCP, whatever. 
get a little bit of get a little bit of resources. There's a couple of prerequisite tools you'll need to really get started. You'll need the Genesis CLI. I'll give you a link to that a minute ago. Bosch CLI. I think everybody knows where to get that. Spruce, which is a YAML merge tool, and then Safe. Safe is a vault wrapper, and you may be wondering why. Why do we need a wrapper for vault? Well, Safe ex makes extends the capabilities of vault. Uh, allows your security to generate some random RSA pairs, SSH private private key pairs, auto generate random secure passwords, uh, and securely provide credentials. And Genesis requires it. So next step, fire up an instance of Vault. You can use a container if you want, or even an existing dev test Vault instance. You could even use Safe to create an in-memory instance, although it only lives while the terminal is open, so I'd, I'd recommend it maybe against that. But just fire up an instance of Vault. Could be one you have. Target this Vault using Safe. Safe documentation is great for this. From an empty folder, run Genesis init-k Bosch. What this does is, is pre-stages that folder and as a, as a Genesis um, kit, downloads the latest kit that's, on the, that's up on GitHub, pulls it down. If you navigate to the Bosch deployments directory, you can run Genesis new ops. And what that essentially does is it'll take you through a CLI wizard of sorts, um, asking you for your vault target, IS specific information such as IP, storage, secrets, credentials, um, clusters, depending on, on your IAS, you'll need to have that stuff available. When that wizard's complete, you'll have a Genesis manifest that is ready to deploy your first Genesis boss. So simply run Genesis deploy ops, and Genesis will fire up a VM interacting with the CPI of what you chose in the previous wizard, and you'll have a Bosch director ready to go. You can then use Genesis to log into that director. Once successfully logged in, it's like any other Bosch director. You can start uploading releases, stem cells, whatever you need to do. You can even start creating deployments from this Bosch director using a similar workflow for other kits that you find. You'll need to create CPI, cloud configs. Genesis doesn't necessarily do that for you but it does handle all the deployments when that's, once, once CPI and Cloud Config are all configured. So this is essentially how Comcast built an architecture that allows a relatively small team to manage and build out Cloud Foundry at an enterprise scale to meet the growing needs of our developers. And as you see in many slides, we're big on open source at, Cloud, at, at Comcast. We do have 145 currently open source repositories. Um, our biggest win is Apache Traffic Control, which is part of our CDN. Kuber Healthy is another one. You can look at all the projects we have and contribute. Um, you know, Comcast, GitHub.io. And visit us at the booth while we're open the rest of the day. Uh, I'll be there shortly after this if you guys have any additional questions. Um, we're hiring, as you're probably well aware. Comcast is a great place to work. It allows us to work in cutting edge stuff like this. Um, I'm pretty passionate about this stuff. I love this stuff, it works. But Comcast also lets you fail and fail as long as you fail fast. Pick yourself up, work on something else, um, and keep pushing forward and making sure you're focused on you know, developer lives and experiences, at least from our side. Questions? In a two-week period, at one point we did three. Once, once we have basically hardware given to us, so we're mostly a VMware, um, but we don't control or manage the, the VM infrastructure. We essentially say, hey, we need hardware. When we get it, from the minute they say it's ready, which means network's ready, storage is ready, compute's ready, we can build it. If we start at 8 a.m., we can almost have it up online by the end of the day and have people pushing applications in with it. So that's how it's repeatable and people onboard onto our team quickly. Um, with this type of architecture. And when you talk about safe, yeah. are you rotating the service on the platform or you can even use that to rotate the service on the platform? You can use that to rotate whatever you want. You can target paths, you can target deployments. Uh -huh. You can do, you have a lot of, a lot of customization there What you can do. Cool. By, by deployment, you can say, if you're a CF deployment, let's say West 1, 
rotate on this on this deployment. It knows in Vault all the paths where those certs are, rotates them for you. Um, the shield, so shield uses the um, a runtime config. So it'll put shield agent wherever you specifically want it. And then from a shield GUI, you can say back up Bosch director, back up, bash up my vault based on the agent. So Postgres, file backup, whatever, whatever it is you're trying to back up. All through that, all through a interactive GUI. And there's a CLI too with shield. Right. So Protobosh Cloud Config has all the IPs for all the Bosch director it's Bosch directors that it deploys, and including like Jumpbox, Shield, Vault, Concourse. All the Bosch directors you then deploy have their own cloud config that handle all their individual deployments. Because that's so what that mean. Being, so, that, so those Bosch directors that get done for each environment, right? So yeah. Push out into AWS or right. Azure or whatever. Yeah. Well, there's a multi-CPI config within the proto, and that allows deployment out too. Um, and that deploys a Bosch, proto deploys a Bosch director that knows it's going to be deploying to VMware, or it's going to be deploying to AWS. That's all built into the Bosch director itself. So you don't have to maintain CPI configs on local, on environment Bosches. Everything's done in the multi-CPI config on proto Bosch that gets pushed out to the Bosch director um, configurations. Yeah. So if you're going to do an update to, to <coughs> Right, or a concourse, which we're, you know, which we do that as well. Yeah, you just say, and it, and it goes through that, that runway workflow. Right. Sure. Yeah, so new kits are released, you know, regularly. You know, look through them, test them, push them out into your, you know, the release notes are very thorough about what's changed. Um, you know, recent changes, I think, they've moved away from, you know, console DNS to Bosch DNS. So you push it out to QA or dev lower environment, test it around, play with it. Um, and then once you're satisfied with that, you can set basically a kit number in a manifest, in a global manifest, and you can start kicking concourse off and it'll deploy out to any ones that you choose. Well, like I said, I'll be at the uh, Comcast booth shortly if anybody wants to, you know, talk further about this stuff. Uh, thank you, thank you for coming, appreciate it.